Good morning, everyone. I am very, very excited to have this conversation with Mr. Perry Marshall. He, um, when I talk about uh, my work is built on the other work of giants, Perry is uh, one of those giants. And he has been one of the most influential people in my business career with his teachings around the 80-20 work. Um, and we get to have a conversation today about the 80-20 and how it's so so powerful and so important for your business. So with that, good morning, Perry. Good morning. Good to be talking to you today. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So we have, um, we're working with seven figure business owners here. And I've just told them that the 80-20 is probably the most powerful tool that they can use in the business. Maybe, well, let's start with a little bit about your background and how we got to this point. Well, so I'm the guy who was an engineer and my wife was three months pregnant and I got laid off from my engineering job and had to scramble and wound up in a sales job and uh, enjoyed two years of bologna sandwiches and ramen soup and spiraling credit card debt and pounding the phone and pounding the pavement and all that joyful stuff that a brand new sales guy gets to experience. And Um, I eventually stumbled into the world of direct marketing. I went to a seminar and Dan Kennedy was one of the speakers and awoken me to this world of guess what you can sell with the printed word instead of just selling with your, your telephone and your, in your sneakers and your, uh, you you know, miles on your car. And, and so, um, a few months later, I started working for, this is in the late 90s, I started working for a tech company that had a website. And I realized before anybody told me that a web page and a direct mail letter were almost the same, and they ran on the same set of principles. And we started learning how to do lead generation online. We, you know, we're like giving away white papers and we're having problem solving charts and, and, you know, reference material that people go searching for and they would come onto our website and request our, you know, request a catalog and stuff. And, and I went from an absolutely miserable, you know, pounding the phone every day, waking up every morning, look at the ceiling and going, geez, I got to go like find a purchasing agent or find an engineer somewhere again to my phone is ringing my fax machine, my, my email box, you know, like they're, they're generally coming my direction and some they're even asking me, so do you ever make it to Cleveland? Right. And, and so it was just this complete revolution. And we, we built that company and we sold it. And I got some money out of the deal. And I thought, what if I actually got good at this? Like, I think I'm sort of okay. Yeah. What if I was really good? And and so that was the beginning of, well, so I I hung out my my shingle and I started doing consulting um, pretty much in the same niche I'd already been in. Um, But in the process, I stumbled on to Google ads about two months after they started selling advertising. So nobody knew what it was and Google was not famous at the time. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. The whole English language is for sale and I can bid on it for starting at five cents. And I only pay when they come to my website and I can test all the ads that I want. This is a marketer's dream greased lightning. And so, and so that led to writing the world's best selling book on internet advertising, which is the ultimate guide to Google AdWords, which is now in its sixth edition. Yeah. You literally wrote the book on this. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, um, uh, you know, you wanted to talk about 80, 20 and 80, 20 is really the backbone of all of this. Right. Because 80, 20 was the tool that I used to figure out Google ads. And remember when you first heard of the Pareto principle, like that, that light bulb moment when you were like, Oh my God, what if we did this and this? 
the first time I heard about it wasn't the light bulb moment. It was the go over goes right over my head moment. Um, I, I read about it somewhere. And they said, 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. And I thought, is that really true? And I printed out a QuickBooks report and I went down through it with my calculator. And I'm like, I'll be darned. I got 20, 20% down from the, from the top. And that was 80% of the money. Yeah. And I proceeded to do nothing with that information. <laughs> um, uh, and I didn't, I didn't really get it yet. But a few years later, I read Rich's Hash's 80-20 book. And now that book all by itself was revolutionary, but the revolution actually happened just in the, uh, the probably the first chapter. And he mentioned just in passing that 80-20 has something to do with chaos theory. And I'm a geek. And I had, I had several books on chaos theory and fractals, which I thought were amazing, mm -hmm. very fascinating topic. And I was like, wait a minute. That if that's true, that means two things. Number one, it means this is very, very fundamental. Like, like the cr cracks on the sidewalk looking exactly the same as cracks on your windshield looking exactly the same as lightning bolts. See, all these things are connected and they run on the same set of principles. And I was like, wait a minute, that means this is everywhere. Like this is freaking everywhere. It's like a fundamental truth. Yes. Yes. This is, this is right up there with gravity yeah. and mass and yeah. time and acceleration and chemistry like this is right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wait a minute, like this, like reorients everything. And the second thing I realized was if it has something to do with chaos theory, it means it's fractal, which means you zoom in, you zoom out microscopic, macroscopic, whether I'm looking at like atoms or, or supernovas, like it's true at every scale. So wait a minute. So I had one of the biggest brain meltdowns of my life on the spot. Yeah. And, and like all of us have these once in a great while, like, I don't just mean like a happy realization. I mean, like a crushing epiphany, like, Oh my word, this rearranges everything. And I, I run home and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Okay. So I've had this little business for a year and a half. That means like 80, 20 is describing my web traffic, my sales leads, my customers, my, and, 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 and I run home and I, I, I've got a calculator and all these pieces of paper. I'm like, I'll be darned. It's true. And I never saw the world the same way after that. And about two months later was when I started writing my Google book. And what, what I, what I under suddenly understood was doing a Google ads account is really it's six or eight or 12, 80, 20 stacked on top of each other. And if you can just get this one and stick, stick it onto this one and stick it onto this one, you can go through the whole thing and you don't have to optimize a hundred percent of it. You have to optimize about 10% of it. And you have to hyper optimize 1% of it. And you focus all your attention on these very tiny parts of it. And you dial them in. This is exactly the brilliance of this. And, and what I'm, you know, it's today's world is so supremely complex that yeah. we're all like just bombarded with complexity. And with this, the beauty of it is it simplifies and it, it gives you breathing room to do excellent work around a singular idea, topic, marketing campaign, whatever the thing is. Um, but then it allows you to also have that confidence that you're, you're kind of doubling down on there. I know there's no guarantees in life, but it's about as close to a guarantee as you can get. Yes. And, and, and I want entrepreneurs to give themselves some credit because 
Like you talked about, you know, complex systems and things are very complex. Yes. Okay. So like, what's a complex system, an economy, uh, a human heart, a human body, um, the ecosystem in your backyard, um, uh, 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 dealing with a virus, like all these things are incredibly complex and there's literally millions of things. Well, so I want you to understand something, building a business is also very complex. There are thousands of moving parts and there are decisions to be made every day. And if it seems hard, that's because it is. Okay. And, and if it seems like nobody else really wants to do this, it's because nobody else really wants to do this. Yeah. I I, I always maintain, you gotta have a bit of a screw loose to want to do this work. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. And, and, and so, and, you know, and if you want to, if you want to go read about complex systems, you know, you could read Anti-Fragile by Taleb or, or, or a book like that. And it, it will give you an appreciation for how, you know, these simple linear solutions to complex problems don't work. Well, 80-20 is a way of looking at a system and saying, yes, This has thousands or even millions of interconnected parts. And if I tried to trace the cause and effect, it would make me dizzy in 10 minutes. And I would never even get it right. But that's not how you have to look at it. You don't have to look at every detail. What you have to know before you even turn the lights on in the morning is, 80% 80% of the causes come from 20% of the effects and two thirds of the causes, uh, two, sorry, I'm two thirds of the effects come from 5% of the causes and 50% of the effects come from 1% of the causes. And so like what causes heart attacks? Well, there's, you know, there's 150 things that cause heart attacks but five of them or two of them, two or three are half, right? Yeah. Like you don't have to solve all 150 problems. In fact, you're stupid if you try. You only need to solve one or two or three or five. And this is, this is always true. And, and so it, it greatly reduces like the amount of brain freeze that you have to deal with every day because you know, it's almost as an article of faith at the end of the day, I will have figured out that um, my staff problems are from less than five of my employees, even though I have a hundred of them. Yep. It's all the, all the people that got customers are probably five, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And so and so it's a law of nature and it, it operates at every level of scale. And the more complex the system is, the more true it is. Yeah. And so it's, it's honestly the most useful thing you could ever teach people in business. My kids know 80, 20 backwards and forwards. Uh, well, it's part of our daily conversation. And it's an endless pool of you, you can, it's endlessly applicable. Mm-hmm. But it's also this opens the door to um, some real questions I have around. It's not just reflective on the past, but it has a predictive quality to it as well. You have in your book, you talk about the 80-20 power curve. Yeah. And I don't fully understand this, but to me, that seems like, hey, look, if I have these defined set of variables and I use this 80-20 power curve, I can almost see how much for lack of a better word, how much money I'm leaving on the table, Mm -hmm. uh, what my business potential could be. And it allows me to, um, you know, really make some strategic and tactical decisions around, you know, again, doubling down on where to go in the future. I'd love it if you could explain this to me. Yeah. So if so, most people, when you talk about any kind of statistics, most people think about bell curves and averages. And I say 
that is usually the wrong kind of statistics and it tells you, it doesn't tell you what you want to know. Okay. And so I invented the 80, 20 curve and it looks like this. Um, and, um, if, if, if you put 80, 20 on a graph, it looks like this little chart that you have here. Uh -huh. And you'll notice that the chart, the, the, the graph goes off the chart on the right side. It's almost always infinite over there. Well, it is. It, when, when you get all the way to the end, it is infinite. Yeah. Okay? Right. It is the infinite within the finite which is yeah. a real mind bender. I know. <laughs> okay. And, and, and what this chart says is that, so it says, if I have a hundred people in a room, their income is described by this chart. Yeah. If I have a hundred roads in my city, the traffic on the, that ro those roads is on this chart. If I have a hundred Google ad campaigns, the traffic that you get from those ad campaigns is this chart. If I have a bucket of rocks, the size of the rocks in the bucket is on this chart. Okay. Yeah, it's everything. It's, it's all over the place. And so what it's, so this is, this is visually representing that 80%. So, if we're going to if we're going to take a charcoal pencil and color the the area under the curve 80% of the charcoal pencil is in the top 20% and 80% of the 80% is in the top 20%. So this is saying that um uh uh so I'm going to I'm going to adjust this let's say that we have a hundred people who spent a hundred dollars total. Okay. So I have a hundred people who spent an average of $1. Well, this says the number one person, I can mouse over it. It says the number one person spent $14 and the number two person spent seven and the number three person spent five. And the number 100 person spent 27 cents. Okay, and so, so when you say, well, the, the average person spent a dollar, yeah, but 10 people spent more than half the money. And so everything is ridiculously unequal. And so, if this is true, if this is always true in the past, it means it's always going to be true in the future. And so it means, for example, that if I have a coffee shop and I sold a thousand five dollar lattes, it virtually guarantees you that one of those thousand people will spend twenty seven hundred dollars on an espresso machine. And this the prediction will be remarkably Correct. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so does that mean like five people will buy a five hundred dollar espresso machine? Yeah, pretty much. And so it turns out that human behavior is ridiculously predictable in large numbers, and you know, you know that if you had a church and the offering today was ten thousand dollars you can pretty much guarantee that a thousand of that was from one person. So it's true of charities and coffee shops and buckets of sand and, 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 and everything. And th this is the most common math that they never taught you in school. Right. I was talking to a PhD psychology researcher last week and she did not, she, I mean, she, at, she works at a university She's a professor and she does. Re she did not know about this. Yeah. And it's it's not just theoretical, heady stuff. I mean, this is real boots on the ground kind of information, because like you're in your coffee shop analogy, it, it tells me, you know, what sort of inventory to have on hand. Yeah. Whether it's worth it to do that or not. 
um, you know, everything, right. Not just marketing, not just, I mean, it's, it's literally everything, right. 80% of the foot traffic is on 20% of the rugs in your house, Yeah, which means you vacuum 15 feet of carpet every, twice a week and only have to vacuum the rest of the house once a month. That's a funny analogy. I just had a conversation yesterday about a, a guy, a gym owner who's sick and tired of vacuuming. It takes him an hour every day to vacuum the mats in the gym. And now I have an answer for him. Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't well, need to do the whole gym. Well, two thirds of the dirt is on 5% of the mats. Yeah. Well, isn't that the whole premise of the Waze app, right? Like if you want to get out of traffic, just move one street over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so it's, it's incredibly useful. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. I have thousands of customers now who are like, as soon as I saw 8020, I couldn't then see it. It's out the window. It's in my, it's like, okay, I'm in this library. You know what? I don't need to read 100% of these books. I need to read 20% of 20% of these books. And I will know two thirds of what's worth knowing in this library. Now all I got to do is figure out, well, which books, like which books do I want to read? Um, I mean, one, one of my, um, uh, litmus test for a book is I pick it up, I open it to a random page and I, and I go, is this interesting? Does this person seem to be teaching me something? A really good author, it's always true. They're teaching you something on every page. Most authors, they don't have hardly anything to teach you. There's an awful lot of books that could be a blog post and there's quite a few that could be like a tweet, right? There's a lot of books where the title tells you everything you need to know. It's the Hemingway, right? Like he's the master of the succinct writing. Yeah. He's kind of the 80, 20 writer. <laughs> and so this unburdens you from all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It tells, does, uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, so, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask how does, I remember when I was studying this 80, 20 power curve and it, I had a thought on how it can predict, um, that idea of the money you're leaving on the table. If I'm like hosting an event and yeah. say the tickets are a hundred dollars per person and I've got a thousand people showing up, if I'm not looking at this power curve and not understanding the potential that I'm leaving on the table during that event, um, that that's like adds up to significant money. Yeah. So 8020 says that the money that you get from people wants to be unequal. So if you have an event and it's a hundred dollars and a thousand people showed up, then you collected a hundred thousand dollars. Well, 80, 20 says that one fifth of those people want to and will spend four times the money. And that one fifth of those people will spend four times that amount of money. And one fourth of those people will spend four times that amount of money. So, so let's walk through it. A, a thousand people spend a hundred dollars. That means 200 will spend 400. Yeah. And it means that 40 will spend 1600. And it means that eight will spend 6,400. Now you start adding that up. It means if you don't have something to sell for 400, 1600 and $6,400, you're leaving about two thirds of the money on the table. And it keeps going until you got one person left. And it probably is saying that one person wants to spend $50,000 and they will, if you have something that the scratches the same itch, Actually, you actually know, you know the itch they have because they responded to one thing. So there, there's a hundred dollar way to scratch the itch, and there's a fifty thousand dollar way to scratch the itch. And if you have both, you'll get both from the same group of people. Like the punchline is you don't have to go get a bunch of new customers. The people in the room are sufficient. Yeah. That, I mean, that last 90 seconds, Perry, of what you just said, right. That's worth multi-millions of dollars. Just that 90 seconds right there. 
I have all kinds of clients who have built entire businesses just on that one thing yeah. or they've gone from marginal to profitable by adding an espresso machine. Oh, they had to see a lot of people don't realize the reason that you sell the coffee in the first place is to attract the few people that will buy espresso machines. And if it, even if that's not absolutely literally true of a particular coffee shop, it's certainly true of most businesses. You know, even to the point that McDonald's is in the real estate business, they're not even in the, in the hamburger business, right? Like, yeah. like, like the, the, um, uh, the McDonald's corporation said, okay, uh, you know, like everybody thinks this is about people spending six or $7 on lunch. No, this is really about owning real estate that appreciates in value. So, I mean, th this goes a long way. Yeah. It's, it's so fast. Like I'm, I'm dying to like, I'm I, my wife's a doctor, as I mentioned, and I'm like, the entrepreneur in me is dying to get into medicine and use these principles in medicine and clinics because she's just a general, not just, she's an internist. Yeah. And they're like the lowest doctor on the totem pole. And they're, you know, all the private practices out there are struggling and dying on the vine because they don't do procedures and they don't make any money. And it's, it's like, but you can use these principles to make it work and fix the entire medical system. Well, I've, I've got a, one of my prize judges for the evolution prize is Dennis Noble. And he is a eminent physiologist who he figured out the cardiac rhythm, which made pacemakers possible. So, wow. I mean, that's how big of a deal he is. And uh, he, he's got an 80, 20 for health. He says, he says, I might get this a little wrong, but if you know somebody's height, weight, you listen to their heart and you take their blood pressure, you have a better indication of their health than sequencing their entire genome. <laughs> it's fascinating. He says the genome, the genome sequence is about 25% accurate in telling you how healthy this person is. And the, the, the little test that you do in five minutes at the doctor's office is 75% accurate of telling you how healthy the person is. And so, yes, there's 80, 20s all over the place. And one of the things that traditional academic school thinking does, it, it focuses on perfection, straight A's, like a college professor almost by definition was a straight A student all their life, which means they, like, they, they, they never, never flunked a class. Maybe they hardly ever failed a test like perfect, perfect, perfect. 8020 says you only have to get 1% really, really right. And you can bomb. Okay, this is why you have these stories of, oh, you know, Abraham Lincoln, he failed at this and he failed at this and he failed at this and he failed at this. And Winston Churchill, he failed at this and he failed at this. And he, well, both of these guys, they turned out to be really good for a particular situation. Like the light bulb, right? There's the Edison light bulb. Right, right. You know. So 8020 is so applicable across the board. Like, okay, back to the McDonald's thing. I, I want to just like buttonhole that a little bit. What is that? So 8020 says, if there's thousands and thousands and thousands of thousands of $6 transactions, then go looking because somewhere there's a $6 million transaction hiding under that somewhere. It has to be there. Where is it? Yeah, well, you sell the McDonald's for $6 million and you bought it 15 years ago for half a million and you made 12X your money and that turns out to be the lever. And the smart people find the lever. One of the, one of the best, like absolute, absolute best people at this is Richard Koch, who wrote the original 80-20 book. Yeah. When I met Richard... 
he was worth 200 million. Now he started out in the nineties after he like sold a consulting firm, he started with 4 million. Now he's worth 1.6 billion. Yeah. His investment track record is better than Warren Buffett. And yet it's so simple. Yes. Like I've, I've been investing for 20 years and it only dawned on me in the last two years. Like it's simply, and this information is so readily available. I'm not, I want to bounce this off you because I'm, I'm thinking it can't be this easy. Find the fastest growing uh, market segment in the S and P 500, find the fastest growing company within that segment, put most of your money in that company and watch it like a hawk. Yeah. You don't even need to watch it like a hawk. Just make sure nothing disastrous happens. Right. Like why do anything outside of that? Right. That's called <laughs> star principle. Unbelievable. And, then, and, and let me remind you, well, you wouldn't, both people wouldn't know this. Richard does not have a platoon of MBAs analyzing all this stuff. He yeah. has an HP 12 financial calculator that's 30 years old. And he has a personal assistant and he has a set of principles. I was like, not a star, not a simplifier, not network effect, not a star, not a simplifier, not network effect. Rinse, repeat. Oh, there's one. Invest in that. There's one. Invest in that. You can absolutely beat the market. Yeah. He's um, another person I would love to talk to. He's just brilliant. Well, he, he is. And, uh, and, 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 I think he's one of the most underrated business authors. So his 80, 20 book gave me the epiphany. And then, and then I realized, well, 80, 20 is fractal and nobody had developed that in any consumable fashion. And so I wrote the 80, 20 sales and marketing book. And that, that book, like this is a book that you read five times oh, uh, and every single time you'll get something new out of it. Yeah. I've, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, it was on my nightstand for about five years and it's, and it's, that's a, and all I'm doing with my marketing plan formula is just taking the next evolution of that and saying, let's 80, 20, your customers and focus all your marketing just on that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we hit the 30 minute mark Perry, and I want to be very respectful of your time. I know how valuable it is. So, um, I could literally talk to you all day about this stuff. Um, I wanted to ask about, well, now I want to ask about science. Do you read science fiction? <laughs> a little. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to know, but like, what's your favorite book and all this, but we can get to there. But to sum it up, this is some of the most extraordinarily powerful information, ideas, levers that you can use in your business. Like there, it's, there's not words to express the value of what anyone's just heard in the last 30 minutes. Um, and for that, Perry, I am extraordinarily grateful and at your service for the rest of time. <laughs> well, thank so. you. It's, I'm glad you're putting this out there because business doesn't have to be as hard as people think it is. Right. Well, how can, so anyone watching this, right? Everyone that's going through my training is going to see this. Um, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? What's, what uh, can we, if someone go, wants to get a hold of you, what do, what do they need to do? Well, go, go to sell 8020.com and you can buy 8020 sales and marketing for seven bucks, including shipping 14 international, and we'll ship it to you and you'll get, you'll get some additional videos and stuff that you don't get if you buy it on Amazon and it'll, it'll put you on my email list and then you know, we'll, we'll start taking you on the journey and it is get you into Planet Perry. <laughs> Planet Perry is a fascinating journey and, and you'll meet so many interesting people. And we, we have such a fascinating community and, um, and I just, I want, I want to encourage people, you know, entrepreneur journey is hard and it's not for the faint of heart, but like, look at the, at the end of your life, do you want to have lived an adventure or do you want to ju ju be another person who is sitting in the doctor's office watching Days of Our Lives soap operas on TV and reading boring magazines and, and waiting for the seconds to tick by? Well, and what I love about entrepreneurs is if it wasn't for us, who else is going to make the world any better? We'd still be living in caves. 
Well, it's absolutely true. In fact, that's a, that's a, can I tell a quick story about that? Of course. Um, to just close up. So about 15 years ago, I went to Nairobi, Kenya, and um, I was visiting a guy who ran a foster program for AIDS orphans. Um, and so, like, it was kind of depressing. <laughs> I mean, I was glad he was doing it, but I was meeting all these poor people. And I had this just nagging thought. And the nagging thought was, okay, it's really nice to come and do charitable things and help out these poor kids and everything. But like, what about solving the root of the problem? And I, at one point I go, hey, um, you ever heard of microloans? And he goes, oh, we do those too. You want to meet some of those people? I'm like, that would be a lot cheerier than what we've been doing. Let's go do that. And so he goes, sure. And so we go into this village and he goes, all right, I'm going to introduce you to a guy who started a, a business on a hundred dollar loan. And so we go in this cobbler shop and I meet this guy. His name is Paul. He's crippled ironically. And so he's sitting uh, next to the wall with his crutches behind him and he's fixing shoes and there's people coming in his shop and he's got a line of people and he's fixing their shoes. And I talk to him through the translator and he talks back to me and I look at him and I notice there's something different about this guy. And what's different is all these people I've met, they're very nice. They're very polite. And they all have this glassy look in their eye, like, man, life is grinding me down. And he did not have that life is grinding me down look in his eye. It had a sparkle. It's confident. I could tell he was proud of what he was doing. He's, it, the, the vibe was, I got a business. I've got customers. My kids have uniforms. They have books. They're going to school. We're going somewhere. I'm a pillar of my community. And I had this Zen-like moment. Suddenly, I had a flashback. And all of a sudden, instead of being in Nairobi, Kenya, in a village somewhere, I'm at an Amway rally and everybody's jumping up and down. We're going to get rich. And okay, that was like a pink Kool-Aid machine that I participated in a long time ago. And... And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, why did I just have this flashback about being an Amway when I'm standing in a cobbler shop in, in Kenya? And I thought, well, what were you jumping up and down being excited about? Well, you were trying to be as excited about owning your own business as most people are about a basketball game which is entirely appropriate. It just happens that that was the pink Kool-Aid machine. It wasn't really the real business. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What do you do, Perry? You teach entrepreneurs how to get traffic to their websites and make some money. And what's this guy that you're looking at in the cobbler shop? He's an entrepreneur, just like all y'all. And I realized something. If you don't have an entrepreneur, there is no charity. There is no feeding program. There is no hospital. There is no school. There is no church. There is, there is a human being scratching around in the jungle foraging for food. Yeah. And I thought, okay, Perry, your dad was a minister. And, you know, y'all thought that was all really important. And it was, but guess what? This is important too. And this is what you do. So maybe you should take this seriously. And maybe you shouldn't have any more guilt or misgivings or second thoughts or anything about whether this matters or not. Maybe this matters a lot. And it does. It does. And I don't, I have nothing to add for that. It's, that's why we're here and that's why we do what we do. 
Yeah. So, so Harry. build an entrepreneur, build a city, build a future, build a civilization. Yeah. This is, this is how we're making the world better. Yeah. Hey, from the bottom of my heart, sincerely, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thanks for hosting me. I appreciate it. Do you have a favorite science fiction book? Um, Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury is really good. Um, uh, I, I think The Matrix is one of the best movies ever. I think it's entirely true. Um, and uh, if, if you watch that movie and you don't know what I'm talking about, I think you're sleepwalking. You've been sleepwalking way too long. Yeah. Especially these days, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friend. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, I will be in touch. So we're going to put all your information below on this page. Um, we can put any offer you want in there. We can do your book. We can build out. It's literally unlimited what we can do. It's going to promote to everybody we have. Um, uh, Sally, I hope we can have further conversations. Yeah, sell8020.com. Just put a link there where people can go buy the book and and uh, yeah, if they just buy the book and get on the email list. It'll all take care of itself. Yep. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much.